All right, guys, we are going to get started. I am Allie. I am your MC for Startup Village. Welcome to the largest monthly meetup in the southeast of entrepreneurs. You are, I know, right? There was supposed to be some applause there. I didn't get applause. I was sad. Sad. That's what I like to hear. Awesome. We have a fantastic lineup tonight. Um, for those of you who were here to see Sudu, unfortunately the flu, which is getting everybody else got them. I know, it's sad. So this afternoon they had to back out. We will put them in a later month, but we do have a last minute addition, so don't worry. We still have five fantastic companies tonight. Um, so just bear in mind that when Bungie goes, they had like three hours notice and they're still awesome and showed up with a full slide deck. All right. So... You can check this out on the live stream. We will record this and play it back later. So if you're like me, you can watch yourself later and be like, why did I do that in public? That's terrible and it lives forever. Um, you can follow up with me after the show or Hilton with Startup Village, uh, sorry, with Atlanta Tech Village um, for both the sponsorship options and the volunteer options. So the way this works tonight is we have five companies, five minute pitches, and then five minutes of Q&A a piece. In between each company, there are 30 seconds where our fantastic volunteers who set up all the chairs that you are sitting on and we'll take them down at the end of the night get to pitch as well. And all of their information is on the back wall, so please check that out if you hear something you like. All right, who here has beer? How excited are you about free beer? That's what I like to hear. All right, the free beer comes courtesy of our fantastic sponsors, so give it up for Frank with ATDC. Thanks, Allie. Appreciate it. Good evening, everyone. If you haven't gotten any 420, please come over to the table. There's plenty more Sweetwater 420 for all you 420 fans. Uh, as Allie said, I'm Frank Ty with ATDC. I'm the lead entrepreneur in residence at ATDC, and we are Georgia's technology incubator. What does that mean? We help entrepreneurs learn, launch, scale, and succeed in technology businesses in Georgia. Let me give you a few statistics to help you understand our success rate. Last year, ATDC companies raised over $130 million of investment capital. It's awesome, isn't it? And over $3 billion since our inception. We just saw the list of the top 10 hottest startups by Venture Atlanta, and ATDC on that list is 10 for 10. The first nine are current companies at ATDC, and the 10th one moved to Florida and out of state is a former member. Um, the way we do this is really around the community that we've created in Tech Square. So if you're an entrepreneur who has an idea, ATDC wants you to come and join. We have a place for you. We teach classes on customer discovery and telling your story and financial literacy, and we help you in those early stages decide whether or not this business is a good idea. If you're an early stage company and you're working on your MVP and you haven't raised your seed round yet, we have a place for you. It's called ATDC Accelerate. We have about 126 of those companies that we're working with. If you're a little bit later stage, if you have a team and you're doing it full time and you've raised your seed round and you're trying to get to your first million in recurring revenue, ATDC is the place for you. We have a program called ATDC Signature and we have about 40 of those companies now that are scaling very nicely. So how do we do this? We bring together a team of entrepreneurs and everyone on our staff, they're either serial entrepreneurs who have exited, like myself, we call them entrepreneurs in residence, and we do deep coaching and, and help the entrepreneurs scale their business. We teach classes at the education level. We have a program called Industry Connect. Who here wants more customers? Industry Connect, Georgia Tech brings in, and ATDC brings in um, hundreds of companies every year that are Fortune 1000 companies. And, we ha and these deals and these pitches have resulted in millions of dollars in sales and pilots for our companies. We also have a program we call Investor Connect. And we have a director, Michael Mazur, many of you may know in the community, used to run the Atlanta Tech Angels investment portfolio. And we match entrepreneurs with the right investor. So we have a database of all the investors in the world, how much dry powder they have, what size checks they write. So we can curate this list for you if you're one of our companies that belongs to ATDC. 
If you are a signature company in the later stage, we assign you an entrepreneur in residence, the serial, usually serial entrepreneur or CEO, who's been in your shoes, who has done what you're facing. We've seen it all. And so we can give that kind of advice that's one-on-one. -on -one. Where do you go when you're a founder? You can't tell your spouse or your partner. They don't want to hear it, right? You've all been there. You can't tell your investors or your board. They might fire you. You can't tell your employees. They might quit. You have to be the person that's in charge that knows everything all the time. You've got to have somewhere where you can come and get advice. And that's what, that's what we do for our entrepreneurs. So I just wanted to give you an overview of what we're doing. You can visit us at atdc.org and sign up. You can come in the back. Many of our mentors and coaches and EIRs are here to talk to you. And um, we'd love for you to come down for a tour or to sign up for one of our courses or one of our classes or become one of our companies. And I just want to thank Allie and the Atlanta Tech Village. This place amazes me. The enthusiasm here, the number of people. Every time we come to do this sponsorship of these drinks, I, I'm blown away by the number of people you have here. And I can see between ATDC and Atlanta Tech Village why companies like Amazon are considering coming to Atlanta. This is an amazing community, and we just appreciate it. I want to give one final uh, plug for the Atlanta Startup Games. This is a charity event to be held on the 9th of February at the Fairmont. And these, this, think of this as Office Olympics. So there are teams that are going to compete against each other. All the registration money goes into a pool, and all the money goes to charities. And every company that participates, their charity gets money. We're going to compete against the Atlanta Tech Village uh, in this competition, so game on, Allie. <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody. Come get a beer. And I just realized, yeah, let's give it up for Startup Village. Um, I just realized I also talked briefly about the live stream, but did not tell you where the live stream comes from, so I'm really sorry. Please, everybody wave back there to Pole Spark and say, hi, Pole Spark. Hi, Pole Spark. Yeah, thank you. Uh, they kindly do this every single month for us and then put up the recording, so they definitely get props. All right, so... Now we are actually going to kick it off. You guys ready to go? Fantastic. Give it up for our very first company tonight, Max Rewards. Welcome, Atlanta Startup Vintage. I'm Anik Khan. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Max Rewards. So let's see if this works. All right. So student loan debt is an enormous problem. It's a $1.5 trillion problem. Now, to put that in perspective, if you look at $1.3 trillion and where it falls into GDP, it's slightly less than the GDP of Canada, the 10th richest country in the world. And unlike the GDP of Canada, it's growing at 9% year over year. So while this impacts over 44 million Americans, it disproportionately impacts millennials. The average debt for the class of 2016 was $37,000, and 53% of millennials who have at least a bachelor's degree have student debt. Now, the government has come up with a lot of different initiatives. Unfortunately, they have unusually complex terms and conditions. So, if you want to figure out the best way to pay off your student loans, it's probably going to be a very... Sorry. It's, 
It's probably going to be a very time-consuming, stressful, and confusing process. So our solution is to automate it. We provide personal, actionable recommendations. It just takes a few minutes to use. It saves tens of thousands of dollars. And it's 100% free and objective. Let me show you how it works. So this is our website. To get started, all you do is just sign in, log in with Facebook. There are multiple ways to adding your loans. Um, almost everyone has an L NSLDS account. Um, if, you, if you aren't familiar with it, um, it pretty much collects all the student loan data. So if you have student loans, you have it. Uh, you might need to register for it. Um, so I'm just going to upload one of these files. If there's anything wrong, I can change it. But I'm pretty good here. Um, for this scenario, I'm going to say I work for the city of Atlanta, so I work in the public sector. I'll say I am in Georgia. I have a good credit score. And I'll leave these. Uh, no, let's be a little bit more aggressive here. Let's put $600, because I want to pay off my debt fast. So the recommendations are laid out pretty clearly. So in, you get your, uh, what you, the, sorry, the, the numbers that are relevant for your loans, and then the steps of what you need to actually do to execute your plan. So I'll hide this away. We'll work on this a little bit later. But it's telling me to refinance this one loan. And to kind of do that, I would go through these steps, kind of go through them. And when I'm done with that, it'll tell me the next kind of group of loans I have to work on. So in this group, it's telling me to apply for public service loan forgiveness and select this payment plan. Now, let's do another scenario. So all the data is still saved. So in this scenario, I'm not going to work in the public sector, and so I won't get public service loan forgiveness. So what happens here? So in this scenario, we see a completely different recommendation. In this recommendation, I am recommended to refinance all of my loans. Now, this is based on these interest rates, which may not be accurate. So let's say I'm not as credit worthy as I think I am. So let's put a different rates that we might get from the bank and recalculate and see what happens. So now we can see that it's only telling me to refinance this one loan, the one with a very high interest rate. And all of these loans have, well, it's actually recommended to go on the standard plan. So it's a very completely different recommendation. Now, not everyone is going to have a very high income right out of college. So let's create a scenario or where that's the case. So let's say I make 35000 And let's say I can only pay up to 300 because I have two kids to feed. And so what happens here? So in this scenario, you'll see something interesting. So we're paying about $22,000, and all of it is towards interest. So what's happening here? It's telling me to consolidate and applying for this repayment plan. And if I go behind the scenes, I can see that I am getting an enormous amount of my loans forgiven. And so this is one of the many plans that people are unfamiliar with. And so we want to make sure that everyone is on the best plan for them. If they were just on the standard plan, they'd be paying $17,000 more. So student debt is a significant problem, and our goal is to solve it one borrower at a time. That's our presentation. Yeah, so the question was, what do they have to do uh, to actually execute these recommendations? And so uh, I'll just kind of go back and show you. So here, it's telling you to reconsolidate. -consol uh, and so I click on consolidate at studentloans.gov. It takes me to the government website. So it takes me exactly where I need to go to actually execute these steps. Got it. So the second question was, do we have any expansion plans to other types of loans? 
Uh, the answer is, this is very specific to student loans because of the unique considerations for student loans. However, we do have other apps, including uh, an app that helps you maximize your credit card rewards. Uh, and we do want to plan to continue adding different types of apps to solve different problems. Got it. So the question was, do we factor in income and expenses? And so to a degree, we do by proxy. So you do put in your income, and you do put in how much you can afford to pay in your student loans. And so our algorithm tries to figure out the best plan that's within your budget. Yeah. Sure. So our app is 100%. Oh, sorry. The question was, is this a free app? How do we monetize it? So our app is 100% free to the users, and we expect that certain amount of users are going to refinance their loans, and so we have partnerships with uh, different banks on the refinance part. Oh. Awesome, well, um, actually, let me go back here. Uh, our URL is maxrewards.co. We also have great emoji domains, so you should try that out. Uh, and if you want to add my contact information, you can zoom in on that QR code and you will be able to download my full V card. That's it. All right, awesome. So I talked about those volunteers earlier, and our very first one tonight is Mike with Trust Exchange. Okay, Mike Desco with Trust Exchange. We are a B2B social network. Uh, we enable businesses to exchange and crowdsource information in real time. Uh, Trust Exchange delivers in-depth, accurate, and real-time information on your competitors, your vendors, and your clients. Uh, we've acquired over 20,000 free users, and we also have 30, over 30 enterprise clients who benefit from the network effect of our members' collective information. Our first vertical is vendor compliance management for community banks and credit unions. Our clients save an average of 60,000 a year and also experienced uh, greater audit uh, preparedness. Mike Desco, Trust Exchange. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mike. All right. Hey, are we ready to go? Am I song and dancing? Okay. All right. Our second presenter of the night, Brawl for Cause. Give him a round of applause, guys. Hi everyone, my name is Matt Thomas. I was an early sales lofter, uh, an early roadie employee, and I coached the boxing classes on Tuesday nights right here in ATV. Um, before I dive in, I, I have a question for y'all. So quick show of hands, who here has gotten into a fight? All right, good people, keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up if that fight was for a really good reason. Some hands went down. All you with your hands up, I want to talk to you after this. Okay? Um, all right. So I run a nonprofit called Brawl for a Cause. What we do is we only fight for good reasons. Come on, man. Are we there? Good. All right. So our mission is to train, equip, and inspire everyday people to literally fight for what they believe in. The people that compete in our charity boxing events have never stepped foot into a boxing ring. They're getting outside of their comfort zone and into the ring for their very first time in order to fight for something they personally believe in. The way that we support and empower those people is we set them up with two months of free training. We teach them how to wrap their hands. We teach them how to defend themselves and how to throw a punch. We equip them with all the gear they need in order to do their best on event day. And we give them all the resources they need to raise funds and awareness for their chosen charity. So I want you to think about how nonprofits fundraise today. I want you to picture a millennial, visualize a millennial going to their mailbox, opening up their mailbox, pulling out all the envelopes, going inside, going through those envelopes, finding a nonprofit solicitation letter, opening it with their letter opener, reading through that letter and being so moved by every word that they wrote, read, to pull out their checkbook, write a check, 
put it into an envelope, address that envelope, put a stamp on it, go back out to their mailbox, and mail it back to that nonprofit. How absurd is that? No millennial is going to do that. And, and the world is changing. The world is evolving. Fundraising needs to evolve with it. So here's what we do. Here's one matchup. We have Dusty Rutherford. He's in his mid-30s. He's pastor of his church, and he's on the board for City of Refuge. These are real people in our event. Dusty raised $10,000 for City Refuge, and he's matched up against a guy in his mid-20s, Robert French. Robert is a mechanical engineer, and he's fighting for Start With One Kenya. They provide clean water filters for people in need in Africa. Now, because they both raised $10,000, those funds aggregate. They go together, and they're going to fight over that $20,000 pot. Let's say Robert French wins. He's going to donate 60% of that pot to his cause, so the winner has some sort of, of incentive to actually win the fight. There's some gamification, some competition, but they both sacrificed the com common comforts. They both did this for the right reason, so they both deserve a donation. So Dusty is still going to donate 40% to his cause. This is more than just a fundraiser, though. So those checks are awesome. They go towards... Uh, helping those missions, but what we also generate is hundreds of thousands of digital media impressions for every single bout that we have. So more awareness is being generated, funds are going towards helping that mission, and goodwill is generated for every single bout that we have. Now, we don't just have one bout in every event. We have 15. So 30 people choose 30 different causes, and they're raising funds and awareness for each of their chosen causes. And this impact is more than just local. Take Robert French, for example. He, f he fights for Start With One Kenya. He has fought twice in Brawl for a Cause events. He has raised tens of thousands of dollars, which have bought hundreds of clean water filters and saved thousands of t lives or prolonged thousands of lives in Africa. That's a picture of him with the, the tribal chieftain uh, where he, he went over to Africa and delivered the, the clean water filters that he got punched in the face for. <laughs> Pretty powerful stuff. Um, so our next event is Saturday, February 17th in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Our partners are listed right there, and our notable attendees are, are there also. Um, every single person that comes to this event has field access. If you buy a ticket, you get to walk around in the same field where the Falcons, Atlanta United, and the NCAA championship was just played. If you want to come, you go to brawlforcalls.com. And you'll see that image. You can click buy tickets. By the way, that was created by ATV's own 31 South and Landing Line. Oh. Uh, you click buy tickets. It'll take you over here. You can choose your tickets. If you cannot attend, uh, we ask you to go to this uh, Give Butter fundraising page. Every single brawler has their own page. They have a fundraising tracker in real time. They share their story. And it has a feed of people that have donated and are, are um, giving encouragement every step of the way. So if you... Great. So I will end with this. Um, this is our equivalent of a <laughs> Brawl is back enough. and bigger than ever. On Saturday, February 17th, Brawl for a Cause will take over the field of Mercedes-Benz Stadium, where 30 first-time boxers will face off in 15 brawls, benefiting causes close to their hearts. Dress to impress and enjoy four hours of open bar, casino games, and charity brawls featuring people literally fighting for what they believe in. Visit us online at brawlforacause.com and get your tickets today. Happy to answer your questions. <laughs> Question is, how are matchups done? So uh, right now, I make all the matches. Uh, so you sign up, I get your weight level, um, I get your experience level. Uh, if, if you've competed in other combat sports but you haven't done boxing, we can still consider you. We'll just put you against someone else that's kind of in the same boat. Uh, and then we also take into account funds and awareness generation level. So uh, one of the, the competitors in our next event is Brian Moot. He's co-host for The Burt Show. He's going to generate hundreds of thousands of impressions. Uh, and, and that deserves someone um, that's, uh, that a matchup it can generate a similar amount of, of awareness. Good question. <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, so, um, so we have worked with USA Boxing. Oh, yeah, yeah. How did, uh, his, his question was about insurance, one of the more important parts of all this. Um, so uh, 
I, I've been promoting boxing events for the last six years. Um, and we always partner with USA Boxing. USA Boxing picks the Olympic team for uh, the USA. Um, they sanction all amateur boxing events in uh, the United States, and they provide a $5 million policy uh, for any training injuries and any competition injuries that could happen any step of the way. What else? Sure. So it, it was an evolution, uh, and I did not intend... Oh, yeah. And repeating that question, yeah. So uh, it, the question was, why did I decide to start this, or, or how did this happen? Um, so I went to University of Georgia, uh, joined a fraternity. They were planning a, a boxing event. Uh, fraternity got kicked off campus. Boxing event died. Um, I joined a, a nonprofit on campus that was looking for an interesting fundraiser. And I was like, we could do this charity boxing event. Um, we did it at the Georgia Theater. We put a ring on the stage. We sold 800 tickets, raised a bunch of money, and I was a boxing promoter, uh, kind of on accident. And um, yeah, six years later, I'm still planning boxing events. Um, and it, it's evolved a lot over the, uh, over the time. You know, like most, most charity events are um, one cause, but one fundraiser. Think about your, your typical car wash or, or gala. Um, this benefits 30 different ones. So it, it took a few iterations to get there, but um, the route was in college. Why am I doing this? Uh, so, I don't think enough young people are involved in philanthropy. Um, and I think a problem is that uh, kids don't see younger people in philanthropy. So I, I, I kind of caught this bug at a young age. Um, I, I set a, uh, a goal to ra raise and donate a billion dollars before I die. And I think through a model like this, where each individual brawler is tapping their network and their causes network to raise money, uh, is a way where I, I'm not, I don't have a lot of money, I don't have a lot of experience, but through these brawlers, through lifting them up and supporting them, I think we can reach that goal in my lifetime. In the back, thank you. Sure, so um, uh, on the field of Mercedes-Benz Stadium, as you can imagine, your, your logo would be up on that halo board. It's a one-of-a-kind thing in the world. Um, we can generate uh, at least a million impressions for you at our baseline sponsorship level. That's through influencers like we have competing. That's through uh, radio partners that we have, through uh, digital marketing companies. Um, so there's a lot of impressions we can do. There's a lot of goodwill generated because of the causes we partner with. Um, a lot of benefit to be had. I think one more. Sure, so um, all of you uh, were just an impression for watching that promo video. Um, so that is one view. Uh, a, a stickier impression would be a like on one of the influencer's posts, or, um, or even more, a share, because you're generating more impressions through that virality. We're done. Come find me after. Tell me your fight stories uh, first, and then ask your questions. Um, and yeah, uh, so take a sales. ASV or ATLSV is a promo code for the next 24 hours where all of you get a discount. Awesome. I'm afraid my fight was not for probably a very good reason. I was eight, so, you know. Um, all right. <laughs> Fantastic. We have two volunteers uh, in between this round. So first up, we've got Derek with AppZorro. Derek, where are you? Come on up. All right. Um... How many of, show of hands, who has ever had a good app idea? Nobody? Anybody? You? Okay, everybody. All right, um, we're AppZoro, I'm Derek, and I work with AppZoro, we're headquartered upstairs. We develop mobile apps for startups, small businesses, entrepreneurs, everybody. Um, we're here to solve your problems, so whether you're trying to get your business to make a little bit more money or trying to get your startup off the ground, your Uber for shoes or whatever, um, we're here to help. So consultation, a little bit of everything. We help bring your idea into reality. That's pretty much our model. That's what we do. Come see us. All right, and then we have, I'm gonna say this wrong, Mandar. All right, Mandar with Cloud Exchange. Uh, hello, all. my name is Mandar Joshi, uh, and I'm working on a platform called uh, Cloud Exchange. Uh, and my aim is to, uh, reduce the upfront development cost and time by 60 to 90% for the startup companies. So uh, I'm uh, basically uh, attending a, a lot of lectures at Georgia Tech ATDC. Uh, I'm not officially graduated, 
but I already have a pilot's lineup for the spring, and I'm looking for more pilots for the summer. So if you are interested, please come and talk to me, or my email, uh, cloudexchange at gmail.com is mentioned on the back, or just uh, get my card and uh, we can catch up later. Thank you. Okay, on to our third presenter of the night. Give it up for Bungie. Good afternoon, everybody. I am the fill-in three hours notice, so bear with me through this. Uh, thank you so much, Allie and Frank from ATDC, um, just getting us in last second. So we'll jump right into it. So chances are you've been there. You needed a pickup truck, but you didn't have one. Whether you were purchasing a couch off of Craigslist or maybe a mattress from Costco. Unfortunately, not everything fits into the back of a Toyota Prius. But there is a catch. There are actually local pickup truck drivers within your community that would be more than happy to help you move those items. But there hasn't been an easy way to get those things moved and get connected with those people until now. Introducing Bungie. We are an on-demand delivery service, mobile application that connects pickup truck drivers to customers who need items moved. We launched uh, about a year ago in Kansas City, and since then we've come a long ways. We have been in over 15 different publications and taken home a handful of awards, most notably the Silicon Prairie uh, Startup of the Year Award. Not to be confused with Silicon Valley Startup of the Year Award, not quite on that level. I hope to be someday, but um, we will pretend that Silicon Prairie is just as good for now. Um, and we have also been able to gain some traction in our home headquarters of Kansas City, where we've been able to partner with Costco's and Pottery Barns, um, putting out bunches of trips for them and really helping their sales because of the on-demand, get it out of the store right now model. We've also been able to onboard over 200 drivers between Kansas City and Atlanta, and we have completed more than 5,000 trips for customers. All of this while been, being able to maintain a five-star rating on all our platforms, whether that's Google Review, uh, Facebook, or the app stores. And while we are very excited about that, what we are super, super excited about is that people are enjoying the service and they're sharing it with their friends, telling people, and we have been able to maintain a 25% monthly growth rate month over month since we launched a year ago. So bringing us to market opportunity. From our numbers already, we have been able to determine that the average household will use Bungie twice a year. I mean, think about it, probably twi two times a year you need to get something moved that can fit in the back of a pickup truck. So simple math, households in the US times two gives us our market opportunity. We discounted that back all the way down just to 30% of that, it's very simple. Um, and so with that number, if we are able to do exactly what we've already done in the Kansas City market and stick with our expansion plan through the next two years, we will be at 1.4 million trips completed um, and $71.5 million in gross revenue by the year 2020. The business model, very simple. Um, the, from the transaction, customer or the driver will take 70% of the transaction. Bungie will keep 70% of it. And again, by simply re replicating what we've been able to do in Kansas City over these next few months, um, two years, we will be able to um, retain 24 million in gross profit. So enough with the numbers. How does it actually work? So let's say, you go to Ikea and you see this beautiful yellow couch and you just have to have it. It's yours, right? You have to get it home right now. So what you do, you pull out the Bungie app. You would simply put in the pickup, drop off locations, take a picture of the yellow couch, click request, and within about 30 seconds, you'll be connected to a local pickup truck driver who will start heading your direction. Once he arrives, he will help load the item into the back of his pickup truck drive it to your, your home, whatever the destination may be, and help set it right in your living room in front of your TV so you can watch your favorite show. So um, after the transaction is done, I'm sorry, you'll be able to rate, tip, and pay your driver uh, right through the app, very seamless and effortless. 
So um, we are super excited to, uh, to be here in Atlanta, our first expansion city from Kansas City. We've literally only been here uh, six weeks or something like that. So super happy to uh, join the uh, tech startup community and uh, use this as, as a way to expand to um, the rest of the nation. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, we certainly do. Let me see. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, question was, do we background check our drivers? So we have um, an eight-point uh, safety standard that we go through with all our drivers. They obviously, they apply. We do a phone interview with them. Um, we background check them, inspect their vehicle, and um, obviously we still have the, the rating system that ensures that they are providing the utmost service to our customers. Um, so that's how our network of drivers really works. Um, we have tapped into the firefighters and the police officers um, in the areas that we have launched, and they tend to have pickup trucks and are more than willing to uh, help, you know, help move stuff. So it's been great um, for, for both of us, them and us. So, so the question was, um, does the uh, driver, are they fully responsible for moving items? Um, so kind of the on-demand model is you're going to get one pickup truck and one driver with us. We are actually rolling out with a, um, an update to the app here in about three or four weeks that will allow you to request two drivers. Um, so that's going to be awesome. But as of right now, the, it, through the app, the customer is notified, hey, you're getting one pickup truck and one driver. If you can help load and unload this, then we can get your item moved for you. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Great question. So the, the question was about cost. Um, we actually charge a dollar per mile, dollar per minute, so it's a per minute per mile basis. The average trip is about $35 to $40 depending on your distance, uh, but through the app you can actually, when you put in the pickup and drop off locations, you'll get an estimate and, um, and, and that'll give you your cost. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, no, great question. So um, basically the purpose of the picture, the question was, uh, do you have to be present um, for the item that's going to be moved? Um, as long as there's help at the pickup location, then no, you don't have to be. Basically the, the reason behind the picture is so that the driver knows what they're moving. Um, and so we have a lot of customers that will just like write down on a piece of paper, uh, moving a futon, take a picture of that, and that way the driver will have an idea of what's being shipped. Yes, sir. Yes, we, um, so, thank you. Um, what is the coverage policy? So Bungie covers each trip up to $2,500. Um, so if there's any kind of, you know, scratches, anything that might occur on uh, the transit, Bungie will ensure that product and make sure that it's re replenished to the customer. Yes, sir. Yeah, ab so the question was, how do we plan to compete with, with uh competitors like Rody. Um, we, uh, so coming to Atlanta, I think our model that's a little bit different is the on-demand model. So we're able to get somebody to you within about 20 to 25 minutes, which a lot of customers, once they purchase something, they would rather just go home with their merchandise right away rather than waiting. And Rody is a little bit different as far as the um, response time. Yes, sir. So <laughs> Great question. Great. So the question was, what happens when somebody throws their back out moving a couch? Um, so the, the model that we have, just like um, Uber, Lyft, independent contractors, they carry their own insurance for that. Um, customers um, in the app, it's, it's under their own discretion. But like I said, we are having a, an update to the app where you can actually request too. So we think that's, that's so far been a highly sought after feature. And most people are going to request that second driver. Yes, sir. I'm sorry? So um, we do a lot of digital marketing. Um, we're on Facebook. The question was, how do we um, acquire customers? Um, we do a lot of digital marketing. We're on Craigslist, um, Facebook. 
Um, and we also build a lot of partnerships with stores. There's actually a big need um, for stores to get items out the door, especially at a local level. If you have a small furniture shop, you can't afford delivery or the insurance or, or truck cost on that. So it, it's a nice way to outsource to us. Yes, sir. We can travel up to 100 miles outside of our geofence, which is basically the central location. So we have a geofence in Kansas City. We have one here in Atlanta. So we can deliver anything up to 100 miles outside. All right. Give them a round of applause, guys. On the three hours notice, I was like, do we get an in-app demo? And he was like, I'm just going to show you some slides tonight. It's cool. Uh, so I appreciate that. Um, but I'm going to get an in-app in -app demo personally because I'm going to start using them. All right. So my volunteers for in between here, I've got Chris with Cork Centric. Come on down, Chris. Thank you, Allie. Thank you very much, Allie. How's it going, guys? Problem. Using animals for clothes and accessories is unsustainable. And to be honest, pretty uncool. But what if there was a way to use a material that you could get all the benefits of leather without the negatives? Solution, cork. This is a backpack made out of cork. This is all the rage in Europe and for the rest of the world, same thing. So with that being said, and yes, it is the same cork that's in wine bottles, if you're curious. All the benefits, don't have enough time in 30 seconds to explain them all to you. It's a laundry list of them. If you want to learn more, come talk to me after. Question, I'll leave you with this. If there's a better solution, why do we keep using animals? If you want to find out more, you can go to our Instagram account. It's on the back wall back there. Name of the company is Corkcentric, C-O-R-K-C-E-N-T-R-I-C. Thanks, guys. Awesome. I have Nathan with Big Bang Data Science. Thanks. Hey, so um, you all might have noticed that data science is taking, or deep learning is taking over the world, and I am doing a deep learning course. So if you want to learn deep learning, I have an eight-week course. Uh, it's weekends and nights. You have a five-project portfolio. Uh, at the end, coming out of the course. Um, so if you want to learn more, you can find me, find the big purple words up there on the wall, or Google Big Bang Data Science. We like everybody to hear all the pitches. Okay, awesome. Our fourth presenter, Quorum X Diagnostics. Give them a round, guys. Come on. Allie, thank you so much for having us, and I appreciate every single person that's in here because otherwise we would have nobody to pitch to. So my name is Maria, and our company is Quorum X Diagnostics, and our mission is to reduce antibiotic resistance through the development of better diagnostics. I like to start with a demonstration. As soon as it clicks... Okay, so if you guys will play along, and everyone on this side of the room, that's about 50% of the room, raise your hands and keep them raised. Okay, come on. All right, so if everyone in here, no, a little more, one, one or two more lines. There we go, keep them raised. If everyone in here got an antibiotic in the next year, those with your hands down, congratulations, you got the correct antibiotic. Those with your hands up, Look at this group, inappropriate or unnecessary antibiotic. Thank you. So what's the problem with that? There's a number of problems. Number one, it could be the in, in, uh, incorrect antibiotic, so you're not getting treated. You can have um, nasty C. diff infections, or number three, the development of superbugs. So the place we feel that we can step in and make a difference is with pneumonia infections. There are 3 million cases of pneumonia per year, 450, cases, 450 million cases worldwide, and it's the number one cause of death in children under the age of five. What we are developing 
is a point of care diagnostic for pneumonia infections. So right now, if you go to the ER and get checked out, there's going to be an examination and a chest x-ray. After that, they'll request culture results. That's how they figure out which antibiotic to give you. Culture results can take up to three days. We think we can do that much faster. We can do that in a few minutes. We will be able to determine the bug that's causing the infection within a few minutes as opposed to those three days. And not only that, not only that, we will be able to use that test at the middle and at the end of the infection cycle to determine when to stop and when the infection has left the body. So you'll be able to ta tailor the antibiotics specific to the patient, as opposed to just being on a seven, 10, or 12 day dose. So presently we have a 36 plan month, 36 month plan to market, with a very detailed plan. And presently, we are on the development path. Our quest tonight is we are asking for 630K in order for us to do prototype development, clinicals, and FDA. We have the perfect team to get this done. There were two scientists, an MD, and a business guy. And we are also partnering with ATDC for business development, um, GCMI for prototype development, FDA and CMS, and then lastly, Navicent Health has already agreed to partner with us to do clinical trials. <laughs> we, we have the team, the drive, the knowledge, and the determination to get this done. We just now need some funding support from you. Thank you. I'm done, I guess. When I practice, when I practice, I was over. So now I'm 30 seconds under. All right. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Right. Uh, so I've been working on the secret sauce. Uh, so the question is, how are we going to go about determining or doing this science? So I've been working on the secret sauce for the last 14 years. And um, there are three main parts that we need to pull together in order for this to work. All three parts work individually, so we're just pulling it together as a team. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, where you look, so how are we identifying the bacteria? So um, we are looking for very specific biomarkers that other people have not been looking at, but the science is now up to par so that we can look and we can identify that way. It's not DNA, it's not surface antigen, uh, it's secret sauce. I can talk to you offline if that's all right. Thank you. <laughs> Next. Any more questions? Yes? All right. So is any of it proprietary? Um, so we have a provisional patent pending, or we have a provisional patent right now. So uh, yes, sir. Um, I was with Georgia. Oh, so is any of this research coming out of research institution? So I was with Georgia State uh, where I got my uh, degree. So uh, I did quite a bit of research at the time uh, over there on that, but now we're working independently. Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so what kind of funding are we looking for? We're looking for 630K, and our milestones are first the prototype development, um, clinical trials, 
FDA, CMS, and patents. Thank you. Are we here? Somebody? Yes, sir. So what do I anticipate the cost to be for the patient? Okay, and is, would it be cheaper than the test now? So the tests that are on the market now are culture exams or uh, PCR. And those tests are typically are around $200. And they have to be done in a lab with highly technical staff. This is going to be a point of care diagnostic where you're going to be able to, uh, you're not going to have to have those full-time FTEs in order to test. So the cost, uh, we figure it's going to be around the $150 range, but you're also saving because you don't have those full-time FTEs. Thank you. Anyone? Yes, sir. So what's the accuracy of the current testing and what's the accuracy of um, our test? So we are going to be using antibodies. And um, so there are a number of tests that use antibodies, for instance, like the pregnancy test, um, any of the drug tests out there, and uh, the rapid strep test. So we don't have accuracy data yet. That's going to come with our clinicals. However, it should fall in that same similar range. Yes, hi, thank you. Uh, have we done any bench work yet in third party validation? Proof of concept. Um, so we have not. However, the three individual parts that we need to work, we know those three parts work individually. So all we're trying to do is put it, bring it together. And that's part of the reason why we need to raise these funds in order to get into labs so we can build that prototype and show proof of concept. All right, guys, I think we're out of time. Give her a round of applause. Yes. Nicely done. Nicely done. Excellent. All right, my last and final volunteer, Billy, for Coffee Shop Talk. Hey, I'm Billy Boozer. Um, so I'm a software engineer. I own a small consultancy, and uh, I write code every single day. And for the fun of it, I like to go talk to people at coffee shops. And I thought it was kind of stupid that I wasn't creating something out of this, so I created something out of it. Uh, it's called Coffee Shop Talks. Um, you can go find me on YouTube, Billy Boozer on YouTube, or go to facebook.com slash coffee shop talks. And I talk to people about business, uh, technology, startups, all of those kind of things. Just a fun, relaxed environment. So uh, go check it out. Subscribe, like, do those things, you know, the YouTube thing. Thanks. Do the things. Oh, yes. Apparently, I'm going to go talk at a coffee shop with Billy. All right, awesome. Our last and final presenter tonight, closing page. Good evening, everyone. How are we doing? <laughs> Woo! I'm extremely excited to be on this very special stage to close out the night with closing page. Promise you that's the last pun. It's gonna be. Um, well, let's rewind a little bit. Let's go back to the 90s and see how, if you were a sales professional, how a typical follow up email would be like. There you go. Now let's fast forward to 2018 and see how a sales follow up email is like. You see those attachments over there? Those sales collateral? Disclaimer nobody gives a shit. Like, as a consumer, as a customer, I don't wanna open your seventh attachment. The problem is, email was designed for communication, not content. Definitely not follow-up content. However, there's other problems. The first thing, there's no follow-up content templates. I can only send you just communication, sequencing, automation, but there's no like, curated content hub. Secondly, I don't get any analytics. I have no freaking clue if you opened it or if you, were, like, if you spent seven minutes on my pricing page or whatever, I have no idea. The third thing is, Let's be honest, as a, as a customer, come on, 2018, come on. Like, I don't want to see your follow-up email 
with collateral. You know, that's kind of clutter my inbox. So we wondered, man, there's got to be a there's got to be a solution for this, right? This should be a Slack, like for this. This could be a Slack kind of like communication tool or like what Calendly did for Calendar. Like this got to be a way to fix this broken shit. So we looked around. Sorry, for my, excuse my French. I'm I'm a villager, just so you know. So this is this is the cred. Um, uh, but yeah, so we were like, we wandered for a long time and like we, we realized there was nothing else, so we, we went ahead and built one. So closing page, I'm gonna skip that. You all got the point. Closing page is a simple web app that you can build elegant follow-up pages and send with your, send to you or share with your customers in seconds and track their usage and get better and optimize. Well, Vishal right here is gonna run a quick demo for us. This is how it looks like in the inside. We're already signed in, so we're going to just pull in straight ahead. So you get all kinds of templates already preloaded. He has some styles, and he wanted me to, um, he, wanted, he wanted to write an email to Elon Musk. Right, let's do it. <laughs> so if you scroll up, you'll see different content blocks where you can upload, you know, content, relevant content for Elon Musk. We know he's a space guy, right? Got that. He launched a flamethrower last night. Got that. Super trendy and relevant. Go up there and preview it. There you go. You see the whole page. Hopefully, he'll like it. Publish it. Now, you can just enter your recipient's company name, the boring company. Right? Um, and now, the cool thing is, you don't have to do this one, you know, like 15 times a day. You just save it as a style, and it stays as a style, so you can send it to Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, David Cummings, whoever. Make sure the content is changing, though. So once you say done, you'll get a custom URL, so let's open that. Now we can share this with, you know, with, with Elon Musk on Twitter or email or whatnot, right? That's what he's gonna see. He's gonna play around with it, hopefully, if he has time between those 1,700 companies. Um, but as a sales professional, you get analytics. Vishal's gonna look into the analytics piece. There you go, so you see, you know, the slide by slide analytics and you know some really cool things that are coming up. Anyway, moving past this. Um, let's see, where are we? Features, I guess you got the features. You can customize um, templates in seconds. You get actionable analytics. And you also get notifications, by the way, which we haven't shown, but like if you have an email notification set up, so you get like constant notifications of when your prospects are viewing your pages. Um, our target audience is obviously sales professionals of 2018 modern sales professionals, and a lot of startups are showing interest in us. Uh, startup founders who want to follow up with uh, investors and business meetings and things like that. We also have creative agencies join us. Uh, there's there's a few tiers we're experimenting. There's all, there's definitely a free tier. I would use a free tier if I was a customer myself because there's free 30 closing pages you could do on the free tier, and the other things are coming up next week. Competition, there's, uh, it's, it's kind of like a wide uh, sales landscape. As you know, like, there's all of these automation tools, like Sales Loft's there, out, Outreach there. Uh, HubSpot for sales is massive, but they're all really doing the sequencing and you know, just like sending based on quantity. There's not a lot of focus on quality or how it's curated and things. And there's Docs and an attachment, attach.io, who are basically just collateral, uh, just a one document sharing companies. So we're trying to find that sweet spot between both of them. We're a baby company. I know we're running out of time. We just, we just launched 14 days ago. We have 79 customers sign up. Um, and we're also very proud to announce and, and, and say that we're part of the uh, ATL's, uh, ATV's first pre-accelerator cohort. <laughs> Woo! Some folks there. The ask is go get yourself a closing page at getclosingpage.com or closingpage.com. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. So the question was, do you design the templates yourselves and the user just can pick from one of the templates in the gallery and, um, or can they do it them by themselves? I figured, right? Yes, so our goal is to um, accept any content material you have. So the, the structure, the framework is pre-built, but anything you load into it is acceptable. So 
you don't have to, our, one of our goals was to be, just make sure that you save time for sales steps so that they don't have to do this many times. Yeah, question. How do you make the, uh, the question was how do you make the customer click the link? Yeah. So uh, that we've done customer discovery on that and customers actually prefer a simple web link, almost like Calendly. You know, if they, they would actually want to open something that's just a simple web link, then open your attachments. Also, to add to that, if you do white labeling, you'll get your company.closingpage.com so that it feels like your branded link. Yeah? Right, so I guess the question was, um, there, are you integrating to Salesforce? Yeah. Okay, so what is your target market? And a lot of the uh, sales professionals already have a tool like this. Well, I, the, the, a lot of them actually have just sales automation tools, and we don't, we don't want to mess with the sales process and the sales workflow. So you can still have your automation tool like Salesforce CRM or HubSpot CRM, but just for your closing content, when you think you know, it's towards the end stages of the buying process, you could just build a closing page quickly and then share with them. Yeah, the last. You can go ahead. Yes, that's definitely coming up. The question was, uh, are you integrating currently to HubSpot um, or other CRMs? And that's, we've, in the last 14 days, we've been inundated with feedback emails, especially with HubSpot. I don't know why it's so hot. Uh, everyone wants HubSpot, so we're building that in the next iteration. Lovely question. The question was, are you implementing any AI um, features Super cool idea, we've been thinking about that. We were wondering if we could actually make the content, we could actually recommend the content for you, like how Amazon does recommendations. What if like the content, like the tool itself knew, like these were the top five performing decks or you know, closing pages and recommended itself. But that, that's, we're definitely thinking about it. This guy right here is a machine learning and AI expert. So when he has some free time in the next, next few weeks, I think we should definitely look into it. But thank you for that suggestion. Yes. The, the question is, is there a way to import previous conversation history? Uh, I'm going to have to be honest there. I, right now, we, we, do, we don't. But um, what we're going to do is, if we integrate to your CRM, you know, we can hopefully pull up all of your previously sent sales follow-up emails. That way, at least your follow-up templates will be customized, but you won't have the you know, the history, they, they're all in the service for Salesforce. Yes? Yeah. So the question was, how many of those 79 customers we have as DAU, daily active users? We have about, I would say, two dozens, at least coming back and use them. They're the ones who are doing the 200 published pages. Our goal is to increase that, and hopefully, this event will drive a lot of traffic. Um, our, we're super early. We're, we're almost like a baby company just crawling. Our goal is to get as many signups as we can and get them convert to daily active users and then, and then eventually pay. No, no one yet. We haven't even opened the payment, payment gateway yet. One last question. That was a pretty like stretched arm, so yeah. Okay, the question was, it's more like a suggestion for us. <laughs> I should, we should just probably just hang in here and like take feedback and like build up. Um, the, question, the question was, do you currently integrate, uh, do you currently have an option to send HTML email pages instead of like clicking the link and all that, which is a brilliant idea, stealing from you right away, but the, I think it makes sense. I think it makes sense because, you know, um, <laughs> as ATV, it makes sense because all of the, you know, email automation tools today, like you know, Mailchimp and HubSpot, they all do the uh, HTML pages. So I think we should look into that eventually. But thank you, though. All right.
Great job. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Thanks, everybody, for coming out tonight. Please follow us online. Follow the conversation at hashtag ATLSV. Um, we do this end of every single month, typically last Monday of the month, and we have a meetup page. So catch us there, and you can find out all the information. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, all the fancy things. Um, and I think that is it. Thanks for coming out tonight, guys. Uh, usually your speakers will be up here, and your volunteers will be in the back. So catch them after. Thanks.